and you go by the roller derby name Goblin. Yes, Goblin. Yeah. So uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, since 2006. And are you the team captain, is that right? I am the president, current president. Uh -huh. um, I've been the uh, 2010 president as well. And uh, to, what's the organization that you guys are a part of? Uh, we are, our league is part of um, the Women's Flat Track Roller Derby Association, WFTDA, and um, it's a league that's actually internationally now. It started out just in the U.S. out of uh, Austin, Texas, and now it's spread over to, we have teams in England, Australia, Canada, Germany, uh, so now we're just starting to, it's booming. Wow, it really is. So. Tell me, uh, what do you have to do to be a part of that organization? Are there particular rules or is there something to, that you have to do to be a part? We, when we became part of the organization, you had to have three recommendation letters from other WFTDA leagues to say that you are playing by the actual rules, um, that they're being followed, that all the guidelines for safety are adhered to. And so currently, now what they've done, since there's been such a huge boom and interest of these new leagues popping up is they have an apprentice program. So each of the new teams are, are assigned a current WFTDA league as their mentor. And so they'll assist them to help them with uh, the sanctioning paperwork, how to develop their charters. You have a certain amount of skaters that you can have on your official travel team at a time. Uh, so they, they'll help them with all that. So when they come in, they aren't just blindsided with a lot of paperwork. And, insurance issues and dilemmas that they don't know how to handle. All right. All right. <laughs> so tell me, uh, there are two teams yes. for the Knoxville Roller Girls, and uh, what, explain how that works. Were there just so many people, or is it varsity, junior varsity? How, what is that? It's kind of like a varsity, junior varsity. We have the Brawlers and then the All-Stars, and the All-Stars are, um, they're part of the WFTDA, which is the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. And it's like the skaters version of, say, an NBA or an NFL, something like that. So it's our, it's the governing body of the roller derby leagues. And so on that, you have um, the, that league competes with other WUFTA leagues to um, get uh, ranked within your region. And then, you know, from regions, you go to nationals. Our, I mean, from regionals, you go to nationals. Our B team is kind of like the farm for the A team. You know, either girls will progress Start from off. there mm -hmm. and go on the A team, or maybe they might stay there, depending on their skills or maybe commitment to the league, how much time they can actually dedicate. Um, it just really depends on the skater and their level of participation or their level of pushing themselves. The harder you push yourselves, the more you're likely to move up. What's the, what are the different positions and what, what are their, what do they have to do? Okay. Uh, the pivot is basically the leader of all the blockers. She's a, a special blocker. Uh, she's the only blocker who has the ability to do the jammer, the star pass, which is when the jammer takes off her helmet panty and she can pass it to her pivot and then the pivot would then become the jammer. It's just a strategy you'll use if the jammer's injured or tired or can't get through the pack. The pivot may fall back to grab the panty and go. It's very rare, you don't see it that often. Uh, she is also, the pivot is also basically the last line of defense for the other uh, jammer coming through. Uh, the other blockers, our inside and outside blockers, are to work with the pivot. They communicate the entire time when they're out on the pack to form a wall is what we typically do. That's one of our strategies uh, to hold the, a line up front, a barrier, so that the other jammer can't get through. And then the back blocker the, one of the strategies we use with our black back blocker is they will be their only objective is to focus on the opposing jammer to just stop them immediately when they hit the back of the pack. Um, right, and the pack has to stay within 20 feet mm -hmm. of each other. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, what happens when they drift out if they get farther than 20 feet from each other? They can't block. Is that right? Correct. If they if they go 20 feet and they're out of play, then if they engage the jammer at that time, they'll receive a penalty. They'll receive a major if they engage and will go to the penalty box. If they're just up there and they do get out of the way, they may just receive a minor penalty. Um, you all do a lot of charity work too, don't mm -hmm. you? Our league is a 501c nonprofit organization and we uh, showcase a charity at each of our events as well as doing other charity events throughout the season. We have um, done ha Habitats for Humanity where we've helped build some of the homes. Did toy drives for Toys for Tots. 
and then um, just ran different donation activities at our actual bouts themselves. What are some of the strategies involved in, in roller derby? What, what's, what makes it unique from other sports? I'd say the, m the main thing that makes it different than other sports is that typically a, a player has only one objective. If they're in football and they're linemen, they're there to protect the, the quarterback. If they, you know, if it's in basketball and they're a forward, then they're going to go shoot a goal. Um, or whatever it's called in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in derby, you have to be aware that there's both an offense, you have to play offense and defense at the same time if you're either the jammer or the blocker. If your jammer's coming up, then clearly you're going to work offensively with your jammer to get her through. But if both jammers are there, then you're going to have to work both defense to stop the other jammer from getting through the pack, as well as help yours through. So you have to really multitask and, and be aware of everything, all the surroundings on the track all at one time, otherwise you know, you're going to end up failing. You'll end up being just offense and then the other jammer will go by, or just defense, and then... There are things that we look for. I mean, we do have to keep watch of where every, all our members are and the other team as well. So we need to make sure we're watching for our team's jammer or the other team's jammer and act accordingly based on where they are most of the time. Well, because it's a full contact sport, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of hits, there are a lot of um, crashes. Mm -hmm. But it's not it's not just brutal. There's some thought behind uh, the things that you do. There are rules and regulations as to how you can hit and in which areas you're allowed to hit. Um, you get penalized for not right. hitting in the appropriate areas, right. and you can only use certain parts of your body to hit. Absolutely, and. The rest is basically strategy based on where your team members and the other team members are. A lot of, we have playbooks. We go over drills and at practice. We go over strategies at practice. We um, scrimmage a lot at practice. Practice what we the drills that we were practicing in an actual scrimmage, so we'll know how it goes on the track. Uh, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. It's not just girls out there hitting. You have to think about okay, where's my jammer? Where's their jammer? Who's going to get through the pack first? How can I help mine through? How can I keep her behind me? I mean, there's a lot going on. A lot of teamwork. And you don't want to get blindsided by someone else while you're sitting there thinking that. Because it does happen. And that hurts. <laughs> you don't see it coming, it always the hurts. The blind worse. side hurts bad. <laughs> All right, and tell me, how did you come to be in roller derby? Um, I heard about it from a friend. I was living in Cookville at the time. I started commuting from Cookville to Knoxville for two and a half years to play because there wasn't a derby team in Cookville. Um, just it was an old friend of mine said this would be the perfect sport for me. She was right. <laughs> well, actually, uh, my dad was a ref and wasn't really doing anything after um, high school and a year of college. And he was like, hey, you should come out. And ever since I've been here. Can't get rid of me. So, <laughs> I'd be active, and I've always been a gorilla girl, and I just wanted to try something different, and I love it. It's very therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play softball and basketball, and I needed a new sport. And mom had always talked about how cool roller derby was, and it's heyday. So I looked it up, and sure enough, not one too. How did you get introduced to the sport of roller derby? Back in the 90s, you know, the, the revi revival of that time, you know, even though it was, you know, choreographed back then, you know, it was still exciting. And, and at that point, I was, you know, seven, eight, nine, you know, coming into figuring out what it was to be like to be a girl, you know, and it was just really exciting to think that, you know, I might be able to do that, you know, and here I am. It's, it's really great. For me it was really different. I actually didn't know anything about it until just right before I joined. I happened to be on a, a trip that was work related to a conference in New Orleans and the Roller Girls there did kind of a little, I guess, street performance of musical chairs on skates. And I, it just looked like so much fun. I was like, I had never heard of a group like that before and I grew up roller skating so I loved roller skating. So as soon as I got back home I was like, I wonder if Knoxville has a roller derby league. And, I found him, came to a game, joined up the next day, <laughs> and I'm still here. <laughs> oh gosh, well I love skating. So for me, I, skate, I skated as a kid um, a lot in junior high, 
And um, when I found out there was a league here in Knoxville, my husband encouraged me to go check it out, to see a practice, and that's what I did. And uh, watched a practice and decided to order skates and started skating. I'm, I'm very aggressive, and I've always wanted to play the sport, but I never had played any sports. And when I saw, I saw a poster for recruiting, and I thought, maybe this is for me. <laughs> maybe I can do this. I didn't skate my whole life. I had only skated maybe four or five times before I ever played roller derby. So it was a big transformation. I looked like Bambi for a long time, but I was fine with that. I was determined to... Come a long way, yeah. Bambi. <laughs> determined to get up and figure out how to do the sport, but it's a whole lot of fun and it keeps me in better shape than anything else I could be doing. Uh, well, uh, you know, we moved to Knoxville so I could come to school at UT and uh, I was just kind of looking for something for my wife to do actually and uh, I wanted her to get involved in, in some sort of uh, activity and we found the website of the Hard Knocks Roller Girls and we thought it would be a lot of fun because we, you know, we love to skate and love the idea of a sport. Um, so I started going with her to practices and just watching and got interested because it's a really interesting sport. It's so much fun to watch and it's, uh, there's so much going on so I, I had to find out more. So I uh, started looking up the rules and uh, one thing led to another and then I started becoming a referee with the league. And uh, now that she's not playing because we're expecting a child, uh, it's just me and <laughs> refereeing around and I, I love it. It's, it's probably the funnest thing that I do.